my name is Richard Clausen. I grew up in Connecticut. First of all, let me say what I think science is. Science is an attempt to rationally understand nature. And that's a big deal, the rational part, because people tried to understand nature for millennia before the advent of science. And they did figure some things out and made progress. But the key criteria in how you understand nature wasn't rationality. And that's what really began with the scientific revolution with Galileo and Newton. And so thinking of it in that sense, I would say my interest in science goes back almost as far as I can remember because since I was a little kid, I always wanted to take things apart and understand how they worked. I had, we had toys in the house, you know. I didn't have the uh, chutzpah to take apart functioning good toys. <laughs> I felt like someone bought those. I'll get in trouble if I take them apart. But we had plenty of broken toys around the house. And I would always take them apart, figure out how they worked, and then use the pieces to put back together and to make other things. But actually taking them apart just to understand how they worked was the most interesting part for me. The next big thing that happened was when I was in seventh grade, my brother came home and he had had a, some science course, my older brother, and he was telling me about what he had learned in this science course. And he told me about electrons and protons and neutrons. Well, first molecules. So these days, I think a lot of kids in elementary school may learn about atoms and molecules. But when I was a kid, we, we didn't learn about that in elementary school. So my brother told me everything was made of molecules. And I was like, huh. And then he said, and molecules are made of just three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Oh, no, no, molecules are made of atoms. And then the atoms are just made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then I was like, no, you're just pulling my leg. And he said, no, really, just those three things. And this, like, it's hard to describe how stunned I was by this idea that everything in the world, and I, I kept asking my brother, I'd say like, you mean like the air? And he'd say, yep. The water? Yep. The table? Everything. Me? Everything. And, and, and the, for the whole day, I just kept wandering around thinking, what are these things? These electrons, protons, and neutrons that just them make everything. And I was like, I gotta know what they are. So it wasn't until I got like, finally to my senior year in college and I finished my first full-on quantum mechanics course that I realized actually nobody still really knows what they are. We're still trying to figure that out. I knew since very early on that I was going to study physics. I guess it's because the relativity book that I read, reading about Einstein, and I liked the geometric aspect to it, and I thought that's what I want to study. And I have to admit, my first couple Newtonian mechanics courses in physics, I didn't find that interesting. It's only in retrospect that I find them super interesting. <laughs> undergraduate was Brigham Young University and I studied physics and um, first couple years it's just introductory physics courses kind of general stuff and at that point you don't really have enough mathematics to really deeply understand what you're doing that's part of the reason I didn't perhaps that I didn't enjoy those courses as much but while you're doing that you're also studying more advanced math classes so by the time you get into the third and fourth year you've got um, differential equations, linear algebra, and all this stuff. And then when you study the physics, you can get a lot more insight. It all starts to come together in a much more sort of elegant, beautiful picture. And you see how it all works. And that's when I really started loving it. And then after that, I actually just drove with a friend down to Los Alamos in New Mexico and started asking around the lab if there was anybody who would... We got a phone book of people at the laboratory and started making phone calls to people in physics divisions asking if there was anybody who wanted a summer intern. And we found somebody, so I worked there for the summer. At the end of the summer, they invited me to stay on for a whole year. And um, so that was a great experience. So I worked at Los Alamos for a year. Then I kind of took a break from physics. I did some travel and other stuff. And, uh, but then I got, turned out I just couldn't stay away. I got anxious to get back into physics. I was in Cambodia teaching English. And some people were asking me questions about physics. 
because they knew, heard that I had studied physics. And I'm going to tell a story about this one guy in Cambodia. I was teaching English. We had a little library of books that had been donated and of, in English. And they're just kind of random books. And one of them was a, like an earth science book. And this one of my students came to me one day and he was so excited. He said to me, there are 32 moons in the solar system. 32, not just the one moon, there are 32. Now, by the way, when, we were, when I was growing up a young kid, there was the moon and there were a few moons of Jupiter. Galileo discovered some moons of Jupiter. Mars had a couple of moons. There was a small number of moons that were known in the solar system. But even during the 80s and 90s, more and more moons were being found with more powerful telescopes. Today, you know, th they keep being found. The number is getting bigger and bigger. But anyway, at that time in that book, 32 moons in the solar system. And this guy said, nobody else in my village knows this. And I tell them and they don't believe me. But I know because I can read English. They can't read English. So he was so excited about learning English because it was opening up a world of information to him that otherwise he didn't have access to. And I gotta say that was one of the, like the happiest moments of my time in Cambodia, seeing the effect and the excitement of somebody else at learning new scientific knowledge that he wouldn't have known if he couldn't, if he didn't, if he couldn't read English. Anyway, that and a couple other questions, people learned out that I learned that I was studying physics. They were asking me questions about quantum mechanics and stuff. Nobody can answer <laughs> questions about quantum mechanics. It's always, well, I don't know, sort of this, sort of that. Anyway, so, but thinking about those things got me back into like, you know, I miss physics so much, I gotta go back. So I went back um, to the US and I applied for graduate school. It was while I was at Los Alamos, I, they had lectures every week. Different people come and lecture about different stuff. And I heard a guy lecturing one week about this geometric algebra and the ins geometric insights it gave into quantum mechanics. And I was really intrigued by that. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked it and read some more stuff by him later on. And so when I applied for graduate school, I actually applied at the graduate school where he teaches, which was Arizona State University. And that professor was David Hestinus. And I went there and I studied under him and did my PhD with him. Klee came across in, in talking about his ideas with various people. There were some similarities in ideas he had and things that Dr. Hestinus had studied. And so some people mentioned Hestinus to him. So he looked up Hestinus and he invited Hestinus at some point to come out here and um, talk, just talk some of the ideas, present some of his ideas and listen to QGR's ideas. And so, and at that time I was in Arizona again, doing some work with Hestinus. I've continued to work with him a bit since I graduated. And um, so Hestinus said, sure, I'd love to come out and let me bring my colleague Rich Clausen with me. So I came out with David and that's how I met Klee. And then I, we kind of stayed in touch and I communicated a little bit more after that. And then in 2018, in the spring, I came here and started full time. I love being able to work on physics and get paid for it. And uh, I love the people that I'm working with. Everybody here is really interesting and nice. It's a very friendly environment and a lot of creative, interesting thought going on. And there's some good, interesting mathematics and geometry that we're doing, which is just really fun. Right now, what I'm working on is a modification of the Bjordite coxeter helix. So the Bjordite coxeter helix is a helical structure made of tetrahedra put together face to face in this long chain. And it's aperiodic, it never repeats itself. But with certain twists at each junction where the tetrahedra meet, by defining a certain twist at each point, um, Fong actually discovered a while ago that you can make a periodic structure. And now we've found a sort of, using the Clifford algebra that I learned with Hestinus, I found a kind of elegant way of deriving that formula, proof for it, for the general periodicity, whatever you want. And I'm writing up a paper for that. Oh, wow. Well, here's the ultimate question for me. What is quantum mechanics really telling us? So 
quantum mechanics was developed about 100 years ago, and there's some real mysteries in how to understand it. And in the um, succeeding 100 years, there has been a lot of research in quantum mechanics and in gravity, general relativity. And these are the two major theories, fundamental theories in physics, but they don't quite fit together. And so a lot of people have been working for the past 40, 50 years on trying to find ways to unify quantum mechanics with gravity. And so far, not much success. And in my feeling, so of course everybody would like to say we'd love to have a unified theory of physics, which would mean unifying quantum with gravity. But for me, when I look back at all the advances, that, the big advances that have been made in physics historically, they usually came from somebody, some individual or some groups who really understood the deep messages of the established physics and knew how to use that to go into something new. It's not enough to just say, we need new ideas. You have to have some guidance in the new ideas. And the best guidance comes from a deep understanding of the physics that we already have. And it's not easy. It's easy enough to say from Newtonian mechanics, we know this and that. And from thermodynamics and electrodynamics, we know this and that. But those might just be incidental things we've learned about nature, but they might not be the really deep lessons from those theories. Having the insight to understand the truly deep lesson that comes from prior theories and to know which things are fundamental and we should hang on to and which things are sort of incidental and they can be sacrificed as we develop a new theory, figuring out that distinction is the key. And in my opinion, all of us as a scientific community, we do not yet understand the key fundamental lesson of quantum mechanics. We have to figure that out in order to be guided into progressing to further physics. And that's what I really look forward to the most. Somehow, somewhere, someone discovering enough insight into quantum mechanics that we will be able to say, ah, this is the real lesson that, this, that quantum is teaching us about nature. You've got to have a mixture of appreciating the physical phenomena and appreciating the mathematics. For me, it's the interplay between the two. The mathematics by itself can be beautiful and interesting, but sometimes can be a little bit sterile. Don't tell, don't, <laughs> I didn't say that. Mathematicians, please don't beat me up. It's just a matter of taste. Um, physics, a lot of people can think a lot about physical things and be interested in them, but without the mathematics, there's so much that you miss that you can't see what's really going on. It's when you have the mathematics describing the physical system and you're able to look at the map back and forth between mathematical expressions and terms and functions and the physical things that they're representing. That's, and, and being able to find things in the physical phenomena and find where it is in the mathematics. Being able to see things in the mathematics and find where it is in the physical phenomena. That interplay that goes back and forth between them. There's so much richness and information and like beauty to be found there. And, and that's what I would say is the key thing to look for, that interplay between the math and the physics. So that means study. Study a lot of math and study the physics. But don't just study it to learn the rules. Look for the interplay between the two.